Welcome back, everyone, to our Bible study inspiration brought to you by JLP Evangelistic Outreach Project. You know what? Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, you know, I know you are ready because I'm ready too. I have a question as always. And the question is today David danced for the Lord. Are you dancing for the Lord? Yes, David danced. Are you dancing for the Lord? You know, let's put on our listening ears. We're going to read now Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him with his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the tremble and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Well, you may say, well, how can I Shabbat the Lord? How can I praise the Lord? How can I give God a hallelujah praise if I'm sitting in a wheelchair or if I'm laying down in the bed or, or if I'm sitting down on the sofa? How can I praise God? How can I give him a Shabbat? Well, my brothers and my sisters, we can give God a Shabbat because we worship God in spirit and in truth. Yes, it's all about our heart. It's all about our heart. Yes, where is our heart? Yes, yeah, it's all about how we operate within that renewed mind that God has given us. It's all about our heart. So come on, my brothers and my sisters. Let's just take the time out right now. That's the Shabbat the Lord. Come on. Come on. David, dance for the Lord. Are you dancing? Are we dancing for the Lord? Come on. Shalom. Hallelujah. Shabbat. Shabbat. Come on now. Yoda, we extend our hands. Toda, we lift up your hands. Tahila means to sing. Halea means to celebrate. Hara means to dance. Praise God. Come on now. Oh yes, David danced. Are you dancing? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shabbat. Amen. Shabbat. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, Shabbat is a Hebrew term and it means to praise God with a loud voice. Yes, a loud shout of praise. That's what Shabbat is. I just love Psalms 150. At the end it says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, my brothers and my sisters. You know, David danced for the Lord are you that's the question that i have for us today david dance for the lord are you dancing for the lord i have you dance for the lord you know because to look at worship yes how we worship god yes when we're going to look and see what happened to the children of israel we're going to look there we're going to also look at david and see what happens when true worship comes that true worship comes from that relationship that we have with God is more than a relationship it's it's recognizing the God Lord God Almighty who he is who God is all right so you know we worship God in spirit and in truth and do you know where that scripture is found okay I'm waiting I'm waiting okay get your holy scriptures if you have not turn with me if you will to John chapter Yes, John chapter 4, and here we're going to read at verse 24. And the word of God reads, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God is a spirit, therefore, and those who worship him, my Lord, must worship him spirit and in truth my lord, my lord so that should pop hallelujah Woo. thinking about all the good things that god truly has done for us so now turn with me to psalm 66 and it reads starting at verse one shout joyfully to god all the earth sing the glory of his name make his praise glorious verse three Say to God, how awesome are your works. 
because of the greatness of your power, your enemies will give fright obedience to you. Verse 4, all the earth will worship you and will sing praises to you. They will sing praises to your name. Praise God. Verse 5, come and see the works of God, who is awesome in his deeds toward the sons of men. He turned this sea into dry land. Praise God. They passed through the river on foot. There let us rejoice in him. Verse 7. He rules by his might forever. His eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Verse 8. Bless our God, O peoples, and sound his praise, O Lord, who keeps us in life and does not allow our feet to slip. For you have tried us, O God. You have refined us as silver is refined. Verse 11. You brought us into the net. You laid an oppressive burden upon our loins. Verse 12. You made men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you brought us out into a place of abundance. Praise God. Praise God. So we're going to look here and see what worship and how the children of Israel, how their worship was really for. So now let's look here at verses. Probably we all get to participate. Let's look at verses 1 through 4. And we want to look at some phrases that are used to, to describe their worship. Let's look now. Let's come. Are you there? Let's look at let's look at some phrases that was used. So can we look at verse 1? We can say shout joyfully. So here's a phrase. They're shouting joyfully. So when they're shouting joyfully, they're not sad. They're not gloomy. They're not, oh. They, they're joyful, they're happy, that joyfulness. Uh, verse 2, it says, they sing the glory of his name. They're singing the glory, shouting joyfully, singing the glory of God's name. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Praise the Lord. Singing, sing the glory of his name. That's a part of that worship. Worship now is, is personal. Worship, our worship is personal. It's an individual um, experience. Our worship is personal. Verse 3, that says a phrase here in verse 3 that it's used. And it says, say to God, how awesome are your works because of the greatness of your power. And so here, we, we're, they're saying here, the children of Israel are saying here, how awesome. God, you're awesome. You're an awesome God because of your, how awesome are your works because of the greatness of your power. So here we are shouting joyfully to God. We're shouting joyfully to him, singing the praises, singing his name and how the singing his name, he's such an awesome God because of his great power and his awesome works that he does. And look here at verse four. In verse four, and it says here, we look for some phrases now. Okay, and if you find some more, I want you to leave it down in the box below for us, okay? And all the earth will worship you and will sing praises to you. They will sing praises to your name. Everything, let everything to help grow. Praise the Lord. Woo, I just love that song when we're 50. Okay, so we see here the phrases that the children of Israel are using to help formulate their worship. You see where we're going at? Do you see where we're going? It's helped formulate the worship. It's individualized. It's personal. It becomes a personal time uh, with God, a personal time to worship God. So now let's look here at verses 5 through 7. And here we're going to see what really happened. What happened to Israel? What happened to them for, for them to formulate this form of worship and how they formulated that worship as they were going through the storm. 
through the trials, okay? So now let's look at let's look at verse five. We're gonna look at now and see what 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 really happened there to them. Let's see why this is so important. All the way really through verse 12. Verse 5. That's okay. We see anything here and it says, Come and see the works of God. Here again, it talks about how awesome God is. Come, come on, come and see. Woo, come on, come on, and see the works of God. Uh, his deeds toward the son of men. Talks about in verse 6 what he did, what God did. What happened to the children of Israel. We all know what happened. Moses came, and then Moses, the Lord let Moses, allow Moses to use the staff that was in his hand when it came upon the sea. And what happened? The sea was parted. And they walked through, the children walked through on dry land. So we see that situation that they were in. And it says right here, the Lord turned the sea into dry land. Oh my Lord. Whew, Jesus. And they were able to pass through on the foot. And verse 7 it says, yeah, he rules, he rules by his might forever. My Lord, my Lord. He rules by his might forever. And verse 8, bless our God people and sound his praise to the Lord. You want to make sure that everybody here, everybody can hear that, that loud shout of praise, you know, and make this praise and worship, even though it's an individualized thing, it becomes that public worship. You know, you, you're worshiping because of what God has done for you, and, it's, and you're so individual. You're just working, worshiping, forgetting everything else with a loud shout of praise unto him. And that's what the children of Israel did as well, that loud shout of praise. All right, and so here, uh, you made man, verse 12, you made man ride over our heads. We went through fire and through the water. <laughs> You've been through the fire and the water. Woof. And we've been through the fire and the water, you know, literally. And we've been through the fire and the water. So we see here what has really formulated that worship. But, you know, we, there's something else that's being left out and that helped formulate that worship. I mean, that's the word gratitude. When we look at gratitude. So let's see how gratitude helps form one's worship. Gratitude. So what does gratitude really mean to you when you think of the word gratitude? Give you a few seconds to just think in your mind what gratitude it really is. I want to say that gratitude is an emotion. Gratitude is being thankful. Gratitude shows this gift and you're so thankful oh i'm so thankful for receiving it. oh you thought about me oh thank you thank you so much and we think about how how great that gratitude is it shows that emotion so i want to suggest that when we worship and when the children of Israel worship and when david worship we get into that emotion of uh, that giving that verbal praise Shout. Here it says that verb of shout of praise, an outward praise of worship to God. That verb of outward praise. So that gratitude, we are so thankful. So in that emotion, and we're so thankful to God and what God has done. So we see here what the children, how the children of Israel began to formulate their worship. Now let's turn and look and see what happened to David. David did. You know that David was a king. King David did. And we get a chance to read a little more on Psalm 66 through his entirety. And also, let's turn to Samuel. Yes, second Samuel. David was a king. And here during this time, David was in a position to where when he wanted to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to his rightful place. And this happened during that season, during that time. So when you get a chance in your studies, go and look at 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 6, and read it in its entirety, okay? So we're going to look at about three scriptures here. Uh, 2 Samuel, we're going to see what happened to David, King David. 
and verse 14 and it reads and David was dancing before the Lord with all his might and David was wearing a linen ephod verse 15 so David and all the house of Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouting and the sound of the trumpet. David was dancing before the Lord. You know, David, when David had put on a public worship, he put on a public worship. You know, we know from our studies, our teachers that David, we was, he would gather everyone. He gathered up the singers, the Levite singers, the musicians, and everything. I mean, David just had a great, glorious time, you know, praising God. If we just turn back to verse 5, the same chapter, verse 6, and look at verse 5, and it says, Meanwhile, David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with all kinds of instruments made of firewood, lyrics, harps, tambourines. You know, David had it all, the symbols. There it is, David had all, and they were calling everyone to pray, to worship God. And so we, that work, our worship becomes an individual thing. It's individualized my brothers and my sisters. So you have some homework. Yes, you do. You have a little bit of homework if you're here today and you have some homework. Okay, so our homework for this afternoon, what, what I would like for us to do is to get a sheet of paper and get a pen and get some paper here, get some paper and really break down. I think it's good when we journal to write down on something that happened this year just write down, um, just do one, just do one, do two if you like, one thing that you went through this year, you went through this year, write it down and then write down and see what has really formulated our worship, write down what it was, what the challenge was, and how God manifested himself through it, and how that forms and shapes our worship to him. Okay? You got it? That's our assignment. So write it out. And if you'd like to share it, share it with us. Share some things with us. You know, I think about too our testimony. And we need testimonies. Yes, we need our testimony. So we can others can see what God has done for you, what he's done for me. We have a it's called a testimony. And we share those things and it helps strengthen us as believers, my brothers and my sisters, and it also helps develop our faith and others' faith to a different level of maturity in Christ Jesus. All right. Okay, my brothers and my sisters, this is it for us on this afternoon. We are going to be have a word now. David's dance for the Lord. Can David dance? Are you dancing? Are you worshiping God? Take that time, that personal time that you need to meditate on God's word worship with God. Just spend that time just more than loving. It's past, it surpasses the love that we have on the inside for our most high God. But just begin to love God and worship Him. Worship Him when things are going good in our lives. Worship Him when things are not going good in our lives. Because as He's just that awesome God that He is. Praise God. Praise God. Are you smiling? Are you smiling? Yes, that smile goes a long ways. Yes, that smile goes a long way. All right, I need you to share the Bible study inspiration with others, and we'll see you again on next week. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.